NSA may be snooping en masse via AT&T. America's top snooping agency, the NSA, might be working with telecom giant AT&T to spy on pretty much everyone. According to The Intercept, the National Security Agency may be using AT&T buildings across the U.S. as part of a mass surveillance program called Fairview. The Intercept identified AT&T facilities in Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Dallas, Atlanta, Chicago, Washington, and New York City. The website reports that these locations process AT&T customer data, as well as large amounts of information from other Internet providers inside the U.S. and abroad. The Fairview program, in which AT&T is the sole member, reportedly gives the NSA access to international communications cables, routers, and switches. This has been reported to provide the agency access to billions of metadata records, as well as texts, emails, and phone calls. An AT&T spokesperson told The Intercept the company was required by law to provide information to government and law enforcement. The NSA told the website they couldn't confirm or deny the reporting, but said they are, quote, bound by both policy and law to protect U.S. persons' privacy and civil liberties. They're watching you. Weaponized sound or shoddy spying. Alleged cases of sonic attacks in China and Cuba have raised the question of how sound can be used as a weapon. U.S. diplomats in Guangzhou have been diagnosed with unexplained brain injuries following abnormal sensations of sound and pressure, prompting fears of a sonic weapon. Ultrasound is a possibility, but an unusual weapon choice. It loses power with distance more quickly than audible sounds and requires precise alignment with the subject. University of Maryland researchers theorized that the illness may have resulted from surveillance gear being positioned too closely together. Ultrasonic devices can interfere with each other in a phenomenon known as intermodulation distortion, producing audible sounds similar to what patients claim to hear. When placed at too close range or combined with other ultrasonic emitters, these devices can cause cavitation damage by causing bubbles to form in body fluids, tissues, or cells. It's hard to say for certain what exactly triggered the diplomat's mystery ailments, but more than one expert has chimed in to say bad engineering or a bad spy job is more plausible an explanation than a sonic attack. Lawsuit says Facebook's been spying on users. A lawsuit filed in California claims Facebook hasn't been very friendly to its users. Former startup 643 claims that Facebook used its apps for mass surveillance on users by assembling data from their text and photos, listening to their microphones, and using Bluetooth to pinpoint locations, sometimes without consent. 643 had an app called Pinkini that let you scan their Facebook friends for bikini pics. Citing the lawsuit, The Guardian reports that Facebook could gather metadata from Android phone text messages. 643 claims the company could access nearly all photos on iPhones, as well as those not uploaded to Facebook. The lawsuit also alleges that Facebook also acquired some people's data without their consent. According to The Guardian, the company allegedly gathered information sent by users not on the platform to people with Facebook apps on their phone. Citing the lawsuit, the Huffington Post reports Facebook allegedly used information from Onavo, an app it owns, to observe what people use their phones for beyond Facebook. Facebook has rejected all the claims made by 643. Talk about a brain drain. The People's Republic of China is sponsoring research into technology that scans workers' brains for the emotional state. According to the South China Morning Post, Chinese factory, military, and train workers are all wearing helmets that can track their emotions. Train drivers wearing the tech get a zap if they doze off, as could pilots if the technology ever comes to planes. And, of course, it's all being watched by an AI. According to the MIT Technology Review, the system probably doesn't work despite claims it boosted a factory's profits by over 300 million U.S. dollars. The South China Morning Post reports researchers are also developing a new version with cameras and body-wide sensors for use in hospitals. This would be able to monitor facial expressions, body temperature, and movements. And all that, to Homo sapiens, sounds like the beginnings of the Thought Police, with a live feed to your brain. Face recognition tech used by British cops. The British nanny state has millions of surveillance cameras, but even with those legion of lenses, UK police tech still struggles with face recognition. 
New findings by British newspaper The Independent say that facial recognition technology employed by the UK's Metropolitan Police Force is wrong 98% of the time. The newspaper reports that of 104 alerts created by the force's face recognition system, only two were correct. Responding to the report, the Metropolitan Police told The Independent they were trialing the technology and that there's no current end date for this. The cops also said no arrests have been made via the tech and that all false positives are deleted within 30 days, while other non-alerting images are deleted immediately. Elsewhere, the Independent also found that facial recognition used by police in Wales has been wrong 2,400 times since last June. The newspaper reports that most of this happened last summer in Cardiff when the city was hosting the UEFA Champions League final. Less than 10 percent were accurate matches. According to the BBC, South Wales police said the system has gotten better over time. Watching me, watching you. Big Brother will be watching out for sports fans at Super Bowl 52 this weekend. When Minneapolis hosts Super Bowl 52 this weekend, law enforcement will be watching out for public safety through the lenses of some 2,000 fixed surveillance cameras. Thousands of fans will descend on the city where 3,000 police officers will be on duty. Around 2,000 officers will be equipped with a video application that lets them record and broadcast suspicious activity to a command center. There, 80 staff from various law enforcement agencies will monitor public safety on the day and coordinate accordingly across Minneapolis. According to Pioneer Press, command center officials will watch the movements of officers in real time by tracking blue and white badges on a map. Officials will also be able to monitor and deal with most incidents within the U.S. Bank Stadium via enhanced surveillance technology. Similar operations have taken place in other cities hosting the Super Bowl.